Showtime. 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 Showtime.
The Beach Boys are one of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful bands of all time, selling over 100 million records worldwide. Between the 1960s and 2020s, the group had 37 songs reach the US Top 40, the most by an American band, with four topping the Billboard Hot 100. In 2004, they were ranked number 12 on Rolling Stone's list of the greatest artists of all time. Many critics' polls have ranked Today, Pet Sounds, Smiley Smile, Sunflower and Surf's Up among the finest albums in history. The founding members were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1988. Other members during the band's history have been David Marks, Bruce Johnson, Blondie Chaplin and Ricky Fatar. Now on to today's mnemonic. Mnemonic. And the mnemonic for the Beach Boys original band members is ABCD Melody. We take all of the letters ABCD and for Melody we just take the M. And for this one we picture the Beach Boys on a beach singing a series of melodies in alphabetical order. So we'll get into it. The A is Al Jardine, the B, Brian Wilson, the C, Carl Wilson, and the D, Dennis Wilson. And the melody, we take the M for Mike Love. And we'll just go over that one more time. So that's the mnemonic for the Beach Boys original band members. And the mnemonic is ABCD Melody. The A is Al Jardine, the B, Brian Wilson, the C, Carl Wilson, and the D, Dennis Wilson. And the melody, we take the M for Mike Love. Now on to... Five fun facts. And the first fun fact today, fact number one. Before the Beach Boys were known as the Beach Boys, they were called the Pendletones, which Mike Love came up with, which was a pun on the word Pendleton, which is a popular style of woolen shirt at the time. They hoped that the shirt company would sponsor the group and give them some free shirts. And fact number two. The name The Beach Boys came about when their record label wanted to rename the band The Surfers. It just so happened that this name was already taken, so music executive Russ Reagan then suggested The Beach Boys, which he believed was a perfect combo of beach bums and beautiful boys. And fact number three. Though the Beach Boy name suggests a seaside beachy vibe, only one of the five original members knew how to surf. That was Dennis Wilson, who managed to get married a total of five times and who tragically and ironically died of drowning at Marina del Rey in California in 1983 after a big day drinking. He was just 39 and was survived by his four children. And fact number four. The musical genius of Brian Wilson helped shape the Beach Boys' iconic sound with innovative arrangements and intricate harmonies. Unfortunately, Brian struggled with mental health issues, which he believes was mainly attributed to his drug use, notably LSD. And fact number five. There was a rivalry between the Beach Boys and the Beatles in the 1960s. However, There was no animus, rather a friendly rivalry of respect and appreciation for each other's music, one that pushed both bands to experiment and explore with new sound and cutting-edge recording techniques. And we do have a bonus fact, and that fact is, Dennis Wilson and Charlie Manson were once friends. It was a quid pro quo relationship where Charlie was hoping to use Dennis to help him break in to the music industry, along with Dennis getting a healthy supply of Charlie's girls. The relationship ended in flames, with Dennis moving out of his own house and letting the lease expire just to get Manson out. Dennis did exact a small amount of revenge, though, when he recrafted one of Manson's songs called Cease to Exist and renamed it Never Learn Not to Love and releasing it in his own name. And another little tidbit I just couldn't leave out... Brian Wilson had two daughters, Wendy and Carney Wilson. And in 1989, Wendy and Carney teamed up with China Phillips to form the group Wilson Phillips 
in the early 1990s. Now on to... The the three-question quiz. And the first question, question number one. What year were the Beach Boys inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And question two. Which band member from the original lineup was no relation to the other members? And which Beach Boy was he originally friends with? And question three. The Beach Boys' last number one single on the US Billboard Hot 100 was recorded for a movie soundtrack. What was the name of that movie? And we do have a bonus question, and that question is, which music legend threatened a lawsuit against the Beach Boys for them borrowing the hook and melody to their first hit, Surfing USA? And your options are Little Richard, Chuck Berry, or Smokey Robinson. It's now time to recap that mnemonic. Mnemonic. And the mnemonic for the Beach Boys original band members is ABCD Melody. The A is Al Jardine, the B, Brian Wilson, the C, Carl Wilson, and the D, Dennis Wilson. And the melody, we take the M for Mike Love. Now on to the answers for the three-question quiz. And the first question was... What year were the Beach Boys inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And the year the Beach Boys were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was 1988. Now on this very same year, ironically, there was a young couple who were celebrating their anniversary. Anyway, the girl wanted to do something very special for her man and she knew that he was a massive fan of the Beach Boys. So she goes to her local tattoo parlour and asks how much it will be for a tattoo of a verse from her boyfriend's favourite Beach Boys song. Anyway, the tattoo artist tells her the price, which is unfortunately out of her price range. So she then asks how much will it cost for a tattoo of the Beach Boys logo. The tattoo artist again tells her the price, but unfortunately again, it is more than she can afford. Anyway, disappointed, she's about to leave when the tattoo artist tells her that he can tattoo a B on each bottom cheek for the price range she is looking for. So the girl agrees and gets the tattoo. So on their anniversary, the couple goes out for dinner and later that night come home where the girl tells her boyfriend that she knows how much he likes the Beach Boys and goes on to tell him that she got a very special tattoo just for him. So anyway, all excited, she pulls down her pants, bends over, and shows her boyfriend. The boyfriend takes a look, pauses for a second, then says, Who the hell is Bob? <laughs> and question two. Which band member from the original lineup was no relation to the other members? And which beach boy was he originally friends with? And the band member from the original lineup, which was no relation to the other members, was Al Jardine. And Al Jardine was a school friend of Brian Wilson. And question three. The Beach Boys' last number one single on the US Billboard Hot 100 was recorded for a movie soundtrack. What was the name of that movie? And the Beach Boys' last number one single on the US Billboard Hot 100, which was recorded for a movie soundtrack, was Cocktail in 1988. And our bonus question, which music legend threatened a lawsuit against the Beach Boys for them borrowing the hook and melody to their first hit, Surf in USA? And your options were Little Richard, Chuck Berry or Smokey Robinson. And the music legend that threatened a lawsuit against the Beach Boys was Chuck Berry. And his song was Sweet Little Sixteen. 
and Surfing USA was actually released when Chuck Berry was in jail. Anyway, when he got out, he took up the case and in the end he would receive the whole box and dice, the credit for writing the lyrics and music to the song, as well as receiving all the past, present and future royalties from the hit. Now some may wonder why he received so much, so I urge you to just Google Chuck Berry's original song, Sweet Little Sixteen, and you'll find the Beach Boys basically just changed the lyrics. Now on to... Word of the Week. And this week's Word of the Week is persnickety. And that is spelt P-E-R-S-N-I-C-K-E-T-Y. And the meaning according to dictionary.com is over particular fussy. And our simple example today is Brian Wilson's persnickety attention to detail resulted in the album Pet Sounds, which is held by many as one of the best albums of all time. And just before we leave, as this is episode 130, we have a winner to announce for the Mnemonic of the Month. So for this month, the winner for the Mnemonic of the Month is... Drumroll. Ava from Gastown, Vancouver in Canada. And her mnemonic is on female warriors. And the mnemonic she has used is Buzzjet. And that is spelt B-U-Z-J-E-T-T. And for this one, she uses all of the consonants and the vowels are assisting. So we'll just go through it. For the buzz, we take the B for Boudicca, the U is assisting, and the Z, Zenobia. And the jet, we take the J for Joan of Arc, the E is assisting, the first T, Tamiris, and the second T, Tomoe Gozen. So thank you very much for that, Ava. I definitely know a little bit about Boudicca and Joan of Arc, but not too much about the other three. So definitely a possibility for a mnemonic in the future. Well, that takes us to the end of another episode. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to join our mnemonic community, you can reach us at the mnemonic tree podcast, which is all one word, dot com on the website. From there, you'll find links in the top right to Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Your feedback is much appreciated. So if you have the time, please rate and review the podcast on your chosen platform. Any reviews read on the podcast will receive a small gift of appreciation. And if you want to take the mnemonic challenge, go to the website, scroll down a little, and you'll find several buttons called the Mnemonic Tree Challenge. They contain all the mnemonics to test your recall. Until next time, remember as Socrates said, there is no learning without remembering. See you next time. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense.